vastness of the cosmos, where time stretches into eternity and space folds upon itself in mysterious ways, we exist on a pale blue dot suspended in a sunbeam. Earth is all we've ever known, its mountains and oceans, its creatures and clouds, the rise and fall of civilizations, our entire history, our every heartbeat, echo only here. But is this all there is? This question has haunted humanity since we first gazed at the stars. Are we alone, or are there other islands of life scattered across the cosmic sea? The silence of space may seem deafening, but that silence doesn't necessarily mean emptiness. Somewhere, beyond the reach of our telescopes, beyond the limits of our understanding, life may be thriving in ways we cannot yet imagine. For centuries, we assumed Earth was the center of the universe. Then we learned it orbits the sun, which itself is one of billions in the Milky Way. Now, we know our galaxy is but one among trillions. With each step in our understanding, the universe has grown larger, older, and more mysterious. In that immensity, the possibility of life beyond Earth doesn't just seem likely, it seems inevitable. But what kind of life might exist out there? Not all life needs to look like us, walk like us, or breathe like us. On Earth, life has proven its ability to thrive in extreme environments, deep beneath the ocean where sunlight never touches, within toxic volcanic lakes, in the vacuum of space clinging to spacecraft. If life can find a way in such hellish places here, why not elsewhere? Consider Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, cloaked in ice. Beneath that frozen shell lies a subsurface ocean, kept warm by the moon's internal heat. Here, in the darkness, alien creatures may drift through saltwater seas, sustained by hydrothermal vents. Or think of Titan, Saturn's hazy companion, with lakes not of water, but of liquid methane. Could a different kind of chemistry give rise to a different kind of biology? Mars, our red neighbor, bears the scars of ancient rivers. Once, long ago, it had water, perhaps even lakes and seas. If microbial life took root there, it may still survive underground, waiting to be discovered. And what of Venus, our sister planet? Though its surface is hellish, its upper clouds are temperate. Could life be floating in the Venusian sky, unseen by our instruments? These are not the questions of dreamers alone. They are now at the forefront of scientific inquiry. Robotic explorers like Curiosity, Perseverance, and the upcoming Europa Clipper are searching not just for rocks, but for clues. Clues that may one day lead us to our cosmic cousins. We've sent messages, probes, and even golden records into the stars, whispering to the universe. We are here. Are you? The discovery of exoplanets, worlds beyond our solar system, has transformed the search for life. In just a few decades, we've identified over 5,000 such planets, some Earth-sized, some far stranger, orbiting stars of all types. Some lie in the habitable zone, where temperatures might allow for liquid water. Others orbit red dwarfs, where tidal forces and solar flares challenge the very definition of habitability. And yet, hope remains. Advanced telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope are beginning to peer into the atmospheres of these distant worlds. They look for biosignatures, chemical fingerprints like oxygen, methane or carbon dioxide that could suggest biological processes. Each spectral scan brings us closer to an answer, yet also reminds us of how much we still don't know. What if life exists not as simple cells or microbes, but as intelligent beings? Civilizations that have risen and flourished across the cosmos, writing their own histories among alien stars. If such beings exist, why haven't we seen them? Why is the night so quiet? This is the Fermi Paradox, the contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial civilizations and the lack of contact with them. 
Perhaps they are too far away or too different to recognize. Perhaps they've gone extinct or deliberately choose to remain hidden. Or perhaps we are the first or the last. Some suggest that advanced civilizations might communicate in ways we cannot comprehend through quantum entanglement or dimensions beyond our reach. Others imagine self-replicating probes, slowly exploring galaxies, leaving no trace. Still others fear a great filter, a stage in evolution so perilous that few pass through it. Could we be approaching such a filter ourselves? And yet, the search continues. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence listens to the stars, sifting through cosmic static for patterns, signals, or anomalies. In 1977, a brief signal, known as the WOW signal, stunned astronomers. It lasted just 72 seconds. We've never heard it again. Our dreams of contact often reveal more about us than about those we hope to meet. In fiction, aliens are sometimes saviors, sometimes conquerors, sometimes mirrors of our own fears and hopes. But reality, if we find it, may be more wondrous and more strange than we've ever imagined. Could alien life be built from silicon instead of carbon? Could it think in electromagnetic pulses or exist in cloud-like forms? Might it be peaceful and curious, or cold and indifferent? What if their time runs faster than ours? What if they live in gas giants, or beneath icy crusts, or in digital realms we cannot detect? And what of consciousness itself? Could the universe be home to minds that have evolved beyond physical form, existing as pure energy, thought, or code? Could they be watching us even now, unseen, as we fumble through our technological adolescence? Or maybe the answer lies not in the stars, but within us. What if the first aliens we meet are artificial intelligences, our own creations sent into space long after we're gone? Would they remember us? Would they carry our hopes, our stories, our humanity into the darkness? The journey to find life beyond Earth is also a journey to understand what life truly is. It challenges us to redefine our assumptions, to stretch our minds, and to prepare for answers we may not expect. It requires patience, imagination, and humility. If we find life, it could be microbial, silent and microscopic, yet profound in its implications. It would mean that life is not a miracle of Earth alone, but a property of the universe.